This is the 10 Minute Contrarian Podcast. This is VP. We are a solutions based podcast diving into the world of contrarian investing and alternative finance. You can find us hosted on the No Nonsense Forex YouTube channel, nonsenseforex.com, and podcast players everywhere. Episode 27 was made possible by Blueberry Markets. Trend traders have been doing very well in the past few weeks. If you are not actively trading, you should be. And if you are outside of the United States, you need to be on Blueberry Markets. Why? Well, there's a lot of reasons, but if I had to point to one, it would be customer service. Because at some point in time, no matter which broker you use, something is going to go wrong. And your money is probably going to be hanging in the balance during this time. So if you click the link down below in the show notes, that will take you to the blog for Blueberry Markets that keeps everything up to date so you know what you're getting. At the bottom of that blog, click that link. And when you sign up, you will receive a cash bonus and your own personal native English speaking customer service representative. Now, please don't bother this guy. He handles all of my clients. But if anything should ever go wrong, you actually have your own personal guy you can go to. Fix the problem and get yourself back on track. It is the 10 Minute Contrarian podcast, and we have seen a sell off these past three, four weeks, pretty much all across the board stocks, precious metals, crypto, energy. And during this time, there have been followers of mine who have been asking me via email or on the YouTube comment section or in Discord, hey, VP, can you make a podcast and tell us what's going on? This is a pretty big drop. And even though I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about this, I'm not making a dedicated podcast episode to something like this because I've already gone over all of this. If you want to be a contrarian investor, you have to be in it for the long haul. And if you're in it for the long haul, and you're doing it right by investing money that you can afford to lose, market sell-offs like this have no effect on you. There is no reason for you to get emotional about them. There is no reason to rely on me to come in and explain it all away for you. You The old saying still holds true. If you can't withstand a 50% loss in your stock, then you don't deserve a 5 to 10x gain. This is the game we're playing. This is the volatility we signed up for. And the one thing we cannot do is the same thing nobody can do, and that is time the market. You know, every time I see that stupid question, when, W-E-N, question mark, I can almost rest assured that the person on the other end of that question is a 16-year-old kid who has no investment experience at all. Because anybody with any investment experience knows you cannot time a market. There's a lot of people out there who try, Understand they are mostly doing it for clicks because they are wrong 90% of the time. And as soon as they finally get it right, because most of their followers aren't very bright, they are going to be known as the one who called the reversal or who called the bull market, whatever the case is. So that being known, with the upside that we have the opportunity to participate in, I would much rather be years early than a day late. So if you're going to participate, you're going to be probably too early, which means you're going to have to withstand a lot of these corrections, some small, some medium, some probably very large. You know, that whole market downturn that I talk about all the time has not happened yet. And we've had a couple episodes on this podcast of what that's going to do to your portfolio once that happens. It's probably all going to go down at the same time. And I'm not going to be there to powder your rear end and tell you everything's going to be okay because I am going to be doing one thing and one thing only when we have a big drop like that. And it's the same thing I always do when we have large drops. I'm going to get excited. I'm going to get my shopping list out because it's buying season. You know, if you truly do have the right frame of mind to be a contrarian investor, you celebrate drops like this. Because now you get to add to positions you really like, if that's what you want to do. You get the chance to buy stocks that ran away from you last time. When you're a contrarian investor, you look forward to market sell-offs. So much to the point to when when all your positions are going up in a bull market, it almost makes you mad because you wish you had more. And you wish you would have pulled the trigger more often back when stocks were cheaper. And right now, you are finally getting that chance. Now, I'm going to take a guess here, and it's a total guess, but I think it's a good guess. 
And I'm going to say that most of you are going to take a look at this pullback and still find a way to screw it up. I think way too many of you come from a scarcity mindset. And it really gets in your way and it leaves you with nothing but regret when everything is said and done. So when you say to yourself, I'll buy if there's a pullback, and then the pullback comes, how do you approach it? What you need to be doing is before the market even pulls back, say, okay, if it pulls back to this particular point, and write that down so you hold yourself accountable. Because let's say you're looking at a stock and you're like, all right, this is probably a little too expensive for me, even though I don't know what expensive is. If it pulls back to $3, I'm going to go ahead and buy. And then the pullback actually happens and it pulls back to $3. And then what do you say? Well, if it can pull back to $3, it can certainly go lower. <laughs> and then it doesn't and it runs away from you again. You, know, you had two chances to pull the trigger, but you didn't do it. And I'm saying all of this because we are currently having a pretty sizable pullback in the uranium market. And out of pretty much everything I've ever talked about, uranium is the one thing that so many people wanted to get into but never did because about one or two weeks after I shot that video in November of 2020, the speculation run was on. And everybody who said they were going to wait for a pullback never got the pullback. So they just should have gotten in. So, for example, say there was a stock that was a dollar and you were looking at it, and then after a week it jumps up to a dollar and twenty cents. That's a twenty percent jump in one week. You know, you might be saying, you know, that's that's gotten a lot more expensive now. I don't want to buy it anymore. And then it runs to nine dollars. So who the hell cares if you would have bought it at a dollar twenty or a dollar? So instead of ending up with huge gains, you ended up with nothing. Again, scarcity mindset. It got in your way. I talked last episode about those four magic words. I'm like, just do it anyway. If I want something and I think the time is right, I just go ahead and buy it. And I've said it in the past too. Almost everything I buy immediately goes down right after I buy it. But so what? I'm in this for like three, five years minimum. Do you think I'm really concerned what goes on day by day, week by week? So when it comes to this uranium pullback, there are a lot of stocks that are about 20 to 35% off of their highs. And I can only speak for myself here, but I can say that the reason I bought these uranium stocks hasn't even happened yet. The run we've seen so far has been nothing but speculation. The thing I am waiting for is when the world realizes that we are going to run out of energy unless we up our nuclear fleet across the world. There's a few countries that have already figured this out. France, Russia, China, UAE, a couple places I'm not thinking about. While the rest of the world either doesn't have a lot of access to energy or they're still stuck in this goofy green narrative, you know, which could work someday. But that day is not now or anytime soon. And even if a lot of world leaders have already kind of figured this part out themselves too, they've already gone all in on the green narrative. So they're pretty much going to have to wait for the world to run out of energy before they figure this part out. But in the meantime, you will see many other countries start to build nuclear reactors because all politicians want our votes. And when the rest of the world sees that this whole green initiative is not going to do the job, they're going to have to find a way to save their skin. And they're going to see all these other countries doing just fine with their nuclear fleet. And they're going to have to expand too. And when the world expands its nuclear fleet, when these countries are already expanding their nuclear fleet, China's going nuts with it right now. They're going to come to a realization real soon that we don't have enough uranium to go into the reactors. So the people who mine, process, and sell uranium are going to be able to sell it for whatever they want. And prices are going to go bananas. Because the only other alternative right now is natural gas. And not everybody has it. And Russia has the most of it. And Russia is not charitable with it. This whole new green economy and electrified economy that everybody's talking about is going to need copious amounts of oil and natural gas. And if there is not enough, it cannot happen. Now, given all this, why did price drop in the first place? Well, the spot price has dropped, um, but that really doesn't mean a whole lot right now. Because, again, I don't care what my stocks do right now. 
Uh, the spot price dropped in October for maybe like a week and then bounced right back up. But the main reason, I think, is because when things sell off, and I've mentioned this in the past, the most volatile assets go first. That's why you've seen such a big drop in crypto. And when it comes to stocks, because the market is so small, uranium mining stocks have probably just as much volatility as most cryptocurrencies do, if not more. Add in tax loss selling for the new year, and here we are. Buying season. The fundamentals have done nothing but get better. You know, we've had Sprott come into the game, buying up uh, Uranium Participation Corporation, renaming it, ticker symbol SPUT. They have done nothing but buy up as much uranium as they possibly can. And so then other companies saw this. Uh, uranium Royalty Corporation, Denison, UEC, Kazatomprom, they all started doing the same thing. They're not buying it so they can sell it. They're buying it so they can hoard it for that whole situation I just got done describing. When uranium becomes super, super high in demand, whoever is sitting there with the most above-ground uranium is going to win. Because as far as below-ground uranium, because of the virus, we have lost a lot of time. And when you lose one or two years in the mining world, you don't just lose one or two years, you lose a lot more. So supply is currently tiny, it's not getting bigger, and I anticipate demand to be huge. So if people want to ask the question, VP, would you buy at these prices? It's hard to say because I've been in this thing for so long. But if I was brand new, I probably would be. Again, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Don't do anything I say. But if you regret missing out the first time, it would be awfully silly of you to miss out on the second time as well. Now, which direction do you go with this? Well, you could probably go back to the uranium video that I made. Um, I'll actually link that down below in the show notes and check that out. I gave a lot of different options. Uh, if you're in North America or if you're in Australia, the world is yours. You have so many options out there. Uh, big stocks, little stocks, royalty companies, ETFs. Uh, but if you are in Europe or Africa, it's going to be tough. Uh, I was heartbroken when I saw so many people from that area <laughs> ask me, hey, I really want... Uh, that uranium ETF you were talking about, ticker symbol URNM, but I cannot find it anywhere. And a lot of those people missed out. Currently, I've been asking around on the Discord forum to my Europeans, and they say ETFs are still really a no-go, but there are quite a few options where you can actually pick up a decent amount of stocks. Uh, I have heard interactive brokers, um, but be careful if it's CFDs and that's what you're dealing with, especially if you're holding it for a long time. Some people do this, but just know what you're getting into. Uh, Trading 212, Nordnet, Saxo Bank, just a few places you can start off if you want to search for a place where you can get these things over there in those time zones. Uh, but let me go ahead and give everybody something else, too. This is really interesting. This, I don't know how this is going to turn out, but um, there's a lady named Gwen Preston. She was interviewed a couple weeks ago on the Jay Martin Show. I always like it when Gwen comes on because Gwen gives some really under-the-radar stocks in the, re in the natural resources sector that most people have never even heard of before. I've pretty much heard of every single uranium stock. The market is not big. Um, but she mentioned a couple right towards the middle of this interview that I have never heard before. So you can probably get in them relatively early in the game, which is something you're not going to be able to do with the other companies. She even gave a, a couple of uh, gold mining stocks I haven't heard of either towards the end. It was a really great interview. You should see that. I will put it in the show notes. Um, but when it comes to some of the larger and medium-sized companies, I would say green light there too. With the ones that Gwen mentions, you probably get a better chance of getting in very low. You know, with the more established companies, you probably have a better chance of success once this thing finally takes off. Now, could this whole pullback keep going? I'm sure it could, but I would not let the possibility of that deter you from picking up stocks that you missed out on last time. You know, again, you're already getting a 20 to 35% discount on a lot of these things. Why are you going to sit there and wait for them to drop further when they may not? Again, scarcity mindset. Get rid of it. I don't know one successful investor that has it. Do the work. Pick the ones you like. Put your money down. And enjoy this crazy roller coaster ride called contrarian investing. And celebrate the market sell-offs. Don't fear them. You know, this is when I literally do 90% of my buying. 
Now, when people hear that you're putting your money down on Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, and Fukushima, they're going to look at you like you're absolutely crazy. I mean, who does that? But we are far from crazy. We are just early.